So what is going on YouTube, my name is Mehul and welcome back to another video in which I want to discuss a little bit about background in CSS. Now why background? I don't know, I just like this property and I wanted you to know a bit about that as well specifically. So background allows you to set a bunch of things starting off with the background color. So I can say background as black and you see the whole body turned into a black thing which is not what we want. So let's just go ahead and make this a little bit pretty by saying that it's something like this, right? So you can change colors. You can play around and mess around with, with it a little bit. So yeah, you can do that. Other than that, what you can do is you can specify an image for the background by writing URL and inside single quotes, write the path of the image, right? So here's my image, right? By default, the behavior of the image is to repeat itself. You see the image ends here and it starts repeating again here, right? You can control this behavior by saying background repeat and say nah, no repeat, not none, no repeat. So once you do that, you're going to see once the image ends, it's not going to repeat. And uh, the default behavior is to repeat both in X and Y directions. You can customize that by saying just repeat in X or just repeat in Y. So you can say repeat X, which means it will not repeat in Y direction. That is the downward and upward. And repeat Y means it will just repeat in downward and upward. That is not the horizontal direction. So there's that. So I'm just going to keep it no repeat. The next thing I think you should know is background um, attachment, right? So if you give it a background attachment of fixed, what it's going to do is it's going to keep the background just like that. So you see the background is not scrolling with your scroll bar now. It's just the content, right? So that's one of the things you might want to have on your site. Next is the background size. So let me just get rid of this first of all. Background size can have values like contain, number one. So contain, what it does is that it allows you to have the complete background in visibility, right? So your complete background should be visible to the user, no matter how, uh, you know, if it cuts your um, content in a, in, a, in a way which does not really have the background behind it. So it will just contain the whole image. The cover directive, however, on the other hand, would try to cover whole of your content, right? So in this case, the whole body is covered. So the image is expanded to cover the whole height of the content, right? Contain means the image is expanded to cover the whole width of the content and the image itself and height covers on a different thing. Um, other than that, you can have, you know, size defined in pixels. So if I have a hundred pixel background size, you're going to see its height is hundred pixel, right? If I have a 10 pixel, you're going to see its height is 10 pixels, right? So that's how it works. So you probably want this to be contain or cover something like that. And there's that. You can also give it a background color. So you can say background color is for example, green. This means that the part of the image which is not covered by the uh, part of the background which is not covered by the image should have this color, right? Now, a lot of things can be combined inside this background directive itself. So you can say the background here has the URL of this and you want it not to repeat and this should be green, right? So there's that. It still works in the same way. One thing you should remember is that the order for these directives is not very strict. So you can have something like this and it will still work. You can also have green in front and the URL at the back and it will still work, right? So there's that. So yeah, I mean, that's, that's, that's basically it for this video. If you liked it, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you for watching. And uh, yeah, I'll basically see you in the next one.